Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. I wanted to do something a bit different today and wanted to do my budget. Ignore the fact that this says monthly budget. I'm going to do my bi-weekly budget and show you kind of how I break everything down. So let's take a look here at February. So I typically in the past, I was budgeting for the pay cycle. So for example, I got paid today, the 9th, and I would usually figure out all of my bills, which are in orange in that cycle and deduct that from my paycheck. And then whatever remaining balance that I had from that, I would then pull the cash out and divide it by two and cash stuff weekly. But I actually want to challenge myself and do a full bi-weekly budget. I feel like throughout this journey, I've been just wanting to improve more and more and test myself. And I feel like I'm at a point where I'm okay to do that. So I'm not going to use this sheet quite how it's intended. If you do want it, it is completely free. Um, if you join um, her Facebook group, I can link that down below. But she does have a boutique. Um, she sells a lot of budgeting related things, but she was so kind to provide this free for anybody that joins her free, face her free Facebook group. So. My bi-weekly pay for February 9th is $1,186.73 and that is with overtime. So then I come here and I write down all of my bills. So cell phone which is $53.75. Sorry, this is going to be me moving this paper back and forth. Let's see. I'm going to skip this for now. But then we have the gym, the student loan, and Canva. So gym is $29.95. Student loan is $200. Canva is $12.99. Uh, let's see here. Then we have my balance transfer card. So $40. So FNBO. $40. Then in this pay cycle, my portion of Comcast, oops, which is it did go up a bit, but 42.44. We have loan one. And this is my big one, so the minimum is $338.16. And I don't know if you recall in that video, I said that Merrick forced me to take my credit balance. I had an overpayment on the account and they charge a $4 monthly fee, which is super annoying. So, Merrick is going to be $4. And then we're going to keep a few bucks in for a buffer. I keep my buffer around 50 bucks in my checking account, so this will get me above that $50 threshold so I don't get that warning. Let's see, so we'll do that just because playing with the numbers and the change and everything. I know we ignored this, but we will come back to this. So I had a loan to $59.24 was my minimum on that. But we, like I said, we'll come back to that. So when you add up all of these numbers, so we have 5375 plus 2995 plus 200 plus 1299 plus 40 
plus 42.44 plus 338.16 plus, I don't know if I hit plus 4, plus 554. And this is why I did it this way. So this equals $726.73. There isn't a space for me to write this, but maybe I'll just do this so that I know what I have to play with moving forward. So I take my paycheck and I subtract all of my bills that I have in this two week pay cycle. And then I look for the difference. So we have $1,186.73 minus $726.73 and that is $460. So that is the amount I have to play with for my cash envelopes, my sinking funds, debt payments, that sort of thing. So again, this is with overtime. I'm pretty sure that I'm not going to see overtime for a really long time. They're trying to cut costs however they can. With that said, that will probably be my last overtime for a very long time. I don't know, the way that this is set up doesn't quite work for me, but it works enough where I can make this work. I'm going to just skip over this for a moment. I'm, I'm going to go down to debt savings. Um, I'm going to use this section for debt. <laughs> I'll circle it. So I am putting loan to, guess what, snowball. I paid off that loan too. That video has gone up as far as paying off my one card, so I'm super excited to be able to apply that as a snowball moving forward. I have it as 59.24 was the minimum I always paid on that. I'm just rounding up for the sake of even numbers. So I am budgeting $60 to go toward the snowball. FFM, Fit and Fuel Method, if you remember me mentioning in a video way back, I'm considering this a debt. I had paid for it with my credit card. It was a very large amount. Um, it was 2000 on my card that I had to drop and it, it's for a very long time that I get with my nutritionist and everything. Like we're working on a reverse diet for me. I've screwed my metabolism. I've had disorder eating, disordered eating a lot in my past and a very restrictive diet. Um, homeostasis occurred and me at a deficit, my body now maintains. <laughs> so we've been working through this. Um, I see this as very important. It's for my health. But anyways, I put that on a credit card and then my friend um, loaned me money at zero interest and I want to start chunking out payments now that vet bills and stuff are settled. I want to get this paid off with her. So I am considering this a debt. So when you see me stuffing the envelope, like it's been something that's already paid for, but now I'm just building up the cash so that I can pay my friend back. So I am stuffing a hundred dollars in there. I just have not been stuffing as much as I have wanted to lately. Just a lot of pop-ups were happening preventing me from doing that so now I'm gonna try to throw a bunch and then I'm putting medical here just because I have medical bills close to 5,000 I've gotten bills for 4,000 of it but I, I know there's lingering ones that haven't reached me yet I'm gonna add forty dollars into that envelope when you add up these things here so 60 and 40 is 100 plus 100 is 200 Okay, now we will go back up to here. I, I like, there's not a lot of space for sinking funds and stuff, so I just kind of put things over here, so it's whatever. I mean, I guess gifts is technically variable. It's not like I have to stuff a certain amount, whatever. So we are putting gifts here and then supplements. I'll just put here as well. Okay. So then these two things add up to be $44. So our variable expense total is 44 grand total of fixed and variable. So we take this number here 
plus the variable. So that is $726.73 plus 44. And that is $770.73. And I'm not sure if you saw, but there's different symbols on here that will come into play later on so that we can do a zero-based budget. So that completes that section. Now, grocery. I am cash stuffing for the next two weeks, $20. That looks insane, right? <laughs> That's because I have a gift card. My Christmas bonus finally came. It was, I don't know if it's because of strikes and stuff. I'm not really sure, but because I manage a few accounts, the sales team sends money to those particular people. I manage our Amazon account, which is our biggest account. It's like 70% of our, our business in the publishing world. And that's including international because um, we ship to Mexico, we ship to Japan, Germany. And then I'm doing our Barnes & Noble account and that sort of thing. So because I manage those, I got a bonus. <laughs> so that is a blessing. Basically, that $100 freeing up in my grocery budget is allowing me to stuff that nice chunk over there. This is actually a very bill-heavy portion of the month of February for me. I have a lot of things that came up. This gift card is truly, truly a blessing. I've decided to budget $20 for the next two weeks for takeout. Coffee. I was normally budgeting $5 a week, so I am doing $10. It's going to be super interesting to be mindful and basically like split these things in half in my mind and make it last because the whole reason why I went to weekly cash stuffings was I would blow through my grocery money. I'd buy like a, a huge haul and then I'd run out of food and or f there'd be food waste if I bought like lettuce or something. We're going to try it out. I really want to test myself. As I go through this journey, I just want to keep evolving and doing better and tightening up and that sort of thing so anyways fun i am going for my four mile walk this coming weekend and my friend has that rule once in a new month we will get ice cream and it is now february so we are getting ice cream miscellaneous i would always cash stuff five dollars so we are doing ten dollars Household, I'm putting $10. Okay, then when you add all of this up, so we have 20 and 20, 40, 50, 60, 76. So our cash envelope total is $76. Now sinking funds, I want to continue stuffing teddies. So we are giving her $20. Car insurance, we are stuffing $40. Now I used to do $20 weekly, but because I am now budgeting for a bi-weekly paycheck here, like all of it at once, we're gonna put 20 there. New car, because honestly too, like when I was doing it at a weekly basis, I would literally look at my budget weekly it is actually going to be interesting um, because sometimes spur of the moment things would happen and it was like oh i need to do extra for eating out because this thing popped up now it's who knows what's going to happen in the next two weeks but i have to make this stuff last like twenty dollars for the next two weeks hope there's no pop-ups if there is i'm saying no <laughs> so anyways new car New car is getting $20. And I'm doing that because my car is 10 years old and I need to start preparing for the inevitable. 
car maintenance is getting 20. Vision is getting 20. And dental is getting 20. So then we add all of these up. So we have 60, 80, 100, 20, 40. So our sinking funds total is $140. And then we need to do a grand total of the envelopes and the sinking funds. Uh, let's see. So $216. Okay, then you look at all these symbols here. So the income is up here. Oh, I didn't write the total over here, but whatever. So we have $1,186.73. So then the fixed and variable expenses. So we look for the star symbol. So we have 700, oops, let's do the, there we go. $770.73. And then we look for the diamond symbol for debt savings. So that is 200 and then cash slash sinking the circle the num then we write the number there and so this should be a zero based budget so we start off with the paycheck of one thousand one hundred eighty six dollars seventy three cents then we subtract our fixed and variable expenses which is minus seven hundred seventy dollars and seventy three cents equals equals 416 then we subtract our debt savings so minus 200 and then we minus our cash and sinking funds so minus 216 dollars and there we go that is a zero based budget we are interrupting your regularly scheduled program for some happy mail <laughs> um so so this came from Liz from Liz and Les. I already pulled it out of the original envelope because of uh, keeping her info private. Oh goodness, this is in here. Thank you so much for Happy Mail. I always appreciate it. What is this? Happy Valentine's Day. If there's a if there's a low against friendship, lock me up. Nestle, nope. <laughs> I'm nervous to scratch this. Am I gonna have to save money? I honestly, I honestly don't know. I've not watched um, a lot of videos with these in it. I've just been behind. I'm nervous. Do I scratch it? We're gonna scratch it. How fun. I don't want to read it. I just, I just want to scratch it for some and see what it's... <gasps> oh. Look how cute. Oh, this is... Oh my gosh. Is this an actual written note? You are brilliant and kind. I love you. Oh my gosh. That is so cute. Thank you so much, Liz. Oh my gosh, so cute. I think she made these too. It's awesome. I love a scratch off. Love. Thank you. I say I love a scratch off yet. <laughs> I don't really do savings challenges. I don't know. Like, should I guys? Should I do savings challenges? I feel like if I did savings challenges, I would do it for the low priority stuff because like, I always want to stuff a specific amount in my focus binder and my higher priority stuff. But then I have, I carry guilt of stuffing things for the more low priority because I'm so focused on paying off debt. Wait, it makes me feel bad. Ugh. Is that weird? Anyways, this came from Angela. Thank you so much. Ooh, it's a hallmark. <laughs> Oh my gosh. In autumn, we're talking about that. It's so funny. We were talking about that from uh, budgeting after 40. 
about how hallmarks were the best i always as a child used, i used to do this on the back of a hallmark i would circle it and point an arrow that says like you got nothing but the best and like, oh it would just be this big joke oh my god <laughs> look how freaking cute oh my gosh oh <laughs> we'll look at the second we'll look Allison, I look forward to getting to know you better. I hope 2023 is a great year for you. I will be here cheering you on. Happy Valentine's Day, and from Ange, budget and debt. Thank you so much. Oh, he's so cute. Oh, what should his name be? Frederick. <laughs> That's always my go-to name for inanimate objects or random animals I see on the streets. Doesn't matter the sex. It's always Frederick. I would na never name a human child that. I just always think it's funny. <laughs> oh my gosh, so cute. I love, I love the boho ones. She sent stickers before. <gasps> oh my god, he's so cute. I love these. These are so my vibe, these stickers. How freaking cute. Did you make these? Did you freaking make these? Oh, what do we have here? Oh, an octopus and a treasure chest. Oh, he's cute. Look how freaking happy he is. Oh, and a heart. Thank you so much. I just wanted to share, I need to do better about incorporating Happy Mail into uh, my videos. I'm really behind on that. <laughs> Um, yeah, so thank you so much. This stuff is never expected, but it really does bring a smile to my face, and I just appreciate you guys. So thank you so much, Liz and Ange. All right, back to the video. If you want to see me continuing to do my budget with you in the future, please let me know and go ahead and drop a flower emoji in the comments down below because I am craving spring, though I cannot complain because today was 51 degrees. It has been a very strange winter and I am okay with it because I hate winter. Anyways, thanks for watching guys. Have a great night. Bye.